Since we began exploring forgotten and historic sites, we have come across countless abandoned theatres and cinemas that have been consistently shuttered in the last few decades, with people starting to find nighttime leisure elsewhere. In today's Urbandum video, we are covering two of these premises that are in dangerous, ruined conditions, yet still present ornate architecture that has survived years of persistent decay. Join us to see what we discover inside. Alistair, what? have you heard that 85% of people are not subscribed? You're joking! They need to hit the subscribe button and press the notification bell to never miss a video. Hi everyone, just a brief announcement before this video begins. Obviously we have a huge catalogue of locations that we've filmed over the past five years and the backlog's always growing. During summer we have some more time so we decided to upload one video a week for the next six weeks and the video will be up every Friday at 6pm. To repeat, that's a brand new video every single week. The last time we did this was uh, winter 2018 so um, I hope you're as excited as we are to see constant content from us. In today's release we are visiting two theatres, one from 2019 and one more recently, but both containing stunning architecture. We had been wanting to see the interior of the first theatre in today's episode for years. In fact, it is probably one of the derelict properties we had been trying for the longest without success. Burnley's Empire Theatre in Lancashire dates back to 1894, being the town's only Grade II listed purpose-built Victorian theatre. Although the interior was remodelled in 1911, it has stayed remarkably original since, which is why we desperately desired to witness the desolate complex for ourselves. After half a decade of attempts, and probably just getting unlucky, earlier this year we were delighted to arrive to see it wide open, albeit with police tape swaying in the wind. Inside an old theatre. Yeah, it's mainly strips. No seats down here, but... Look at the tarp, they're being used to collect stuff falling from the ceiling. Yeah, look at it over here. Loads has fallen down by the looks of it. Only minimal daylight coming in from what looks to be a really, really fucked roof. Big holes up there. The architecture's so nice. There's a tree growing on the roof there. It's unusual that daylight is coming into a theatre. See some old bingo signs over there. That looks to be like one similar. It might, I can't tell, but it could be maybe for a little cafe or food bar or something. They look covered in pigeon poo though. There's a tripod back here. I assume it's not got a camera on it. No, it doesn't. I wonder if this was left here uh, originally for security reasons or whether or not it was for time lapses because they were renovating this place at one point. Taking a step down here towards the stage. There are so many pigeon feces. It's quite revolting. Usually in these theatres, this section here would be a little bar. And I think judging from the, the tiles on the floor, uh, and on the walls, the few that remain. That's probably what this would have been as well. Maybe some kitchens. This place is so stripped there. It 
certain areas I just don't even want to go into because they're absolutely disgusting. You can hear the river running outside. The main auditorium on ground levels. Pretty bland, but as you may have seen, there's definitely more interesting features above. I think we're going to come off concrete soon and onto wood. It looks okay from here, but going up further, it looks oh, like it's shit. really bad. Oh my god. All the dirt collecting on the staircase. This entire section of the circle is it's just fallen in. Best reach probably over this plank. Wow, all the seats are intact, despite everything else. Yeah, that's really nice. Alex and Charlie have made it up here already. <laughs> These places always seem bigger when you get above. The auditorium was absolutely stunning from the balcony and we were shocked to see the seating still intact whilst everything else was crumbling. In its prime, the room could hold more than 1,200 audience members who would watch a plethora of plays and films, the most iconic being the first ever film featuring escapist Harry Houdini. Crazy that these are left. In relatively good condition as well. They're not particularly old seats. However, it just gives it a different atmosphere when you can imagine thousands of people sat here watching a performance. We don't often come across decaying theatres like this that are worth visiting nowadays. Oh my fucking god. Look at that. I know there's a trust that have made the task on their hands to uh, restore this theatre. That is a lengthy job. I think they um, fixed up the roof recently to when we're visiting now. But some bits of it are still in desperate need of repair. It would be an almost impossible task. I'm surprised there's not as much graffiti in here. It's quite a well-known building. I think the, um, the trust got rid of it recently. Uh, that makes sense. I saw it in some um, pictures. Yeah, at least they're looking after it. I mean, it's a bit... <laughs> Surprising considering its condition, but these are nice toilets, very dated. Look at the brickwork up there, it's entirely exposed. That's crazy. Old theatres like this are such mazes. Have these winding corridors that don't seem to go anywhere, they've just been left through renovation after renovation. This gets so narrow, and I doubt there's anything through there. As Alistair was just saying, it's very maze-like in here. The staircase that we just joined onto doesn't actually lead around to this one. So we're hoping this will take us to the top tier of seats. Yeah, the stairs going up, so it should do. Yeah, the stairs going up, so it should do. The construction lights up here look like they've not been used in years. Having said that though, we did have to cross some police tape. Well, it was already kind of snapped, but it wasn't like that a few days ago. We know that for sure, so. It's weird how they didn't seal it and they just put tape up. That anyone can just get past. It must get sealed soon, you'd have thought. The top floor, yeah. Yeah, the floors are rather questionable. It's a lot steeper this tier. This is exactly like the first we did in Doncaster. Yeah. 
These are the like poor seats at the top. When the property shut down in 1995 after a bingo company moved out, this upper level was sealed off from the rest of the theatre with a partition. It is likely that the false wall was removed recently to help with restoration efforts. There's no seats remaining on the other side and here a lot of it's stripped but you can see the um, backrest is still here so I think they would have just perched on the wood here. It never would meet health and safety regulations now. But you wouldn't have half a bad view. It's quite strange how the projection room is down from the top two. Normally it's positioned just above, but it's obviously changes with the layout and the design of the theatres. It's a lovely old door. Some of these rooms are absolutely disgusting. You can just tell by the level of decay and damp. And I'm sure you can imagine what it's like to be in here. Here's the, the room itself. I didn't expect much. It's quite nice, but it's definitely not the best one we've seen. Very few remnants of the past here. Uh, there's some sort of lever there that would have played a part in the operation of this room. There's the projector windows there from the outside. See here's in there. It's kind of like this box squashed right into the middle of these very steep seats at the top. This is a different staircase. Very wooden. Holy shit. Fucking hell. I don't want to go down there. Pigeons above me. This is cool though. Wow. Overlooks the whole theatre. In the alcove. Anyone with memories of visiting the building will find it tough to take it lying in this unfortunate way. It could have been worse, as in 2018 a developer came very close to purchasing the Empire with plans for demolition. However, a team known as the Burnley Empire Trust and the Theatres Trust were able to acquire the premises instead. Currently, they are working hard to save the historic structure and are doing as much as they can with limited funds. If you wish to help the cause, we will link their page in the description. Next up, we are looking at a larger type, with one of the grandest facades of all theatres we have seen. Based in the city of Bradford in Yorkshire, the new Victoria Theatre would open in September 1930 with a capacity of 3,300. In 2019, as light was fading on a chilly autumn day, we headed inside, aware that construction work was occurring to restore the property. We anticipated that we would discover some architectural details still retained, but little else, as the developers were aiming to maintain certain rare features. This is quite a different one to what we'd usually do, but I think it's worth seeing this just because of how historical it is in its final stages, almost as a fear. This is interesting. There's old pictures of it, I think. Wow. It just shows how such an impressive building with such nice architecture can turn into this. And there you go, that's what 
the central attraction would look like with the dome in all its glory. This is where we can test the abilities of my torch. Holy crap. This was the state of the auditorium four years ago, totally stripped down to the bone, but still with a significant spiral where the dome had once towered over visitors. We should probably point out that this footage isn't up to our standard nowadays, but we haven't seen much documentation of the site at this time, so we thought it was best to showcase it. Wow. That ceiling is amazing. Just got like the slightest amount of chip paint on it as well. After probably many years of dereliction. It's the original uh, wallpaper, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Holy shit. So I believe this room was, uh, well it wasn't originally, but it became two rooms when the place became cinema, uh, after its time as a theatre. So in their renovation process, they've took away the false walls that were here and kind of returned the room to its original state, which is so cool. It just, I'm sure it looks a lot better like this than whatever it was like as a cinema. The ceiling is amazing. Wow. <laughs> That's under the dome that you could see from outside. Probably shouldn't shine my light actually at those windows because that is straight into the city centre but... Oh my god. You can see why, with the incredible design and city centre location, developers were keen with taking on the decaying theatre compared to Burnley's empire. We were astounded with the unique foyers inside. That's where the projector room was, but we just looked on the other side of that and it's the full height of this wall, so they've removed the floor in between. And obviously there wasn't going to be any projectors left, but there used to be when it was in its first stages of abandonment. Even though it's all a, almost like safe because of the scaffolding and such, it still isn't. Holding up an abandoned building isn't easy. In the 1960s, the stalls of the theatre was converted into a 1,000 seating bingo hall, whilst the circle hosted free screens for an Odeon cinema. Before the turn of the century, the two businesses had vacated the site, leaving it disused for over two decades. This is the dome on the other side. It seems to be suffering from water damage though, I don't want to mess around with any dry rot. Not much left of this ceiling now. Either it's been stripped off or it's just decayed, but I doubt it. And 
this should lead to the projector room. I'm done. There is quite a lot of stuff left in this one. This chair's so old. You can just tell. The cobwebs on it. Cinematian. I thought these were buttons, I don't think they are, I think they're lights. Some old school switches down here then. Four years onwards, and the major transformation of the former cinema into a live music venue is almost complete, projected to open in 2024. We find it very interesting to compare the two, Bradford's property bearing the funding and council support that Burnley's Empire Theatre dreams of. Perhaps in a few decades time, with some wishful thinking, both iconic buildings will be thriving once more, their brief defunct intermissions forgotten, with their real purposes regained. Here are some of our photographs captured at the two abandoned theatres. If you like the look of them, check out our Instagram page below, where we share images from our explorers months before they are seen on YouTube. Thanks for watching. Another week, another episode. We hope you have liked all the weekly content so far. See you next time.